Today I'm at Portland International Raceway. There is a big vintage race here today. Let's take a look around the paddock before things get started where we can get a better look at the cars. There's a Morgan, MG Midget, Alfa Romeo GTV, and we got a Datsun 2000 Roadster, another MG Midget. This one has big SCCA flares on it. We have another midget over here. We're going to see a bunch of these today because there is a Sprite and Midget Challenge race. They do have a series for the Sprites and Midgets that they run at different tracks here in the Upper West Coast. Now we have a Panard. I thought this was a Berkeley when I saw it when I was pulling in, but it is obviously not. Really unusual to see one of these as a race car. Here we got another midget. This one also has small SECA flares. There's a couple bug eyes. There's even a Sebring Sprite. <laughs> This car was turned into a Sebring Sprite in 2013. Next we have an orange bug eye and a blue one. Both of these have really tall cages on them, so they must have tall drivers. I have a couple more MG Midgets. Another bug eye. And another Midget. This one has a Weber carburetor. I'm not real familiar with my open wheel chassis. This one has a Crossel badge on the front. This one here has the Ford Kent engine. No idea whose chassis this car is using. This is probably a 1.6 liter Kent in this car. Here we have an MGB. People are just starting to wake up, so not all the cars are uncovered, but it's going to be a chaos once the races start. Here we have a beautiful Lotus Elan, right hand drive. It's not just British cars here this weekend. There are American race cars like this Mustang and this Trans Am Camaro. There's a little racing Morris Minor taking off right there. Morris Minor pickup truck. This is a Porsche 914. Then we've got a big Healy, which was towed here by an old Chevrolet. It's doing it just the way they would have done back in the past. This one is a 104, so this would have the big four cylinder in it. It's got the fold down windshield. Oh, you got to do it again. Exactly. We have a couple MG BGTs. This one's right hand drive. Love the livery on this one. This one is also right hand drive. I 
Another open wheel car. A couple more next to it. This one is another Crossel. And this one is a Titan. Here we have another Mustang. This one is done up to look like it was one of Carol Shelby's Terlingua Racing Team cars. By the way, the group running here this weekend is called the Sovereign Vintage Racing Group. Another Ford powered race car. Here we get a good look at that engine. And here we have a Datsun 2000 just as a pit car. And behind it is a Lotus 11. And he chose car number 11. And here we have another Ford Kent powered car. This is another Titan chassis. The owner did confirm to me that these are running in the 1600 configuration. Now to challenge those Mustangs, we have a Camaro. The crew chief for this car just told me that this is a real vintage race car and this car did race in Daytona. You can see the lights to identify the car on the top there. And here we have an Elva. These were powered by MG engines. This is a very interesting race car made by McCann Engineering. This has a three-cylinder, two-stroke Suzuki engine. As you can imagine with all this aluminum, it is extremely lightweight. If we come along the back, you can see the three exhausts, one exhaust for each cylinder. This car has a really unusual feature, inboard front brakes. I don't know if I've ever seen that on a car before. And in front of the windshield, you can see where the air blows out after it blows through the brakes, cooling them down. This might be an actual McLaren. Another Ford powered open wheel race car. There's so many of these Ford open wheel cars that this is probably going to be the largest group. And they're probably going to have some really good racing today. Here's someone's 356 pit vehicle. Next to it, a Porsche 911. But check this out. A Volkswagen Beetle race car. It must be a 1966. It looks in very nice condition. They've put a plastic window in the back with some holes, let the air get out of the car. Here's a couple more 911s. We found another Camaro. This looks like a pretty serious Trans Am car. This car has come down from Canada to race today. Now we have a Panos Esperante. I used to race one of these. I raced one for a long time. This is a GT2 car. This one is the GTS model, which comes with a 351 cubic inch Windsor Ford engine. Some of the Panos race cars had fiberglass bodies, but 
the GTS comes with a, an ABS plastic body, which is a lot lighter, as well as easier to repair. It looks like this Panos has come down from Canada as well. Here's something you don't see every day, a Studebaker race car. This car has been kept pretty original inside, so I would care to guess that this might be a real vintage race car that raced back in the day. Underneath the hood we have a V8. You can see there's an alternator and a modern MSD ignition system on this car. And we have a Jaguar E-Type. This is the first E-Type I've seen here today, actually. This one has the 4.2 liter Jag straight six. And we've got a Volvo. This one has an AccuSump oil system. So if he were to lose oil pressure, he'll get a few seconds left without an oil pump. Then an old Monte Carlo. This is an old Trans Am GT1 car. Here's the first Corvette I've seen here today. These Corvettes were extremely popular race cars when they came out. This is an interesting sign. I've never seen one of these at a racetrack before, letting you know that there is leaded gas in use in these cars. And of course there is. It's the only way to get high octane out of fuel. Here we can get a good look at one of these cars with the entire body off. I think this is an IV chassis car. Master cylinders, pretty exposed there on the front. Here we have a Lotus. This one is also Ford Power, so this Lotus chassis will be competing with its 1600 Ford Kent engine. Here's a Ford Cortina. You should recognize this engine by now because this is the engine that we've been seeing in all of these open wheel race cars. Next to that, we have a Lola. This Lola is powered by a dual overhead cam Cosworth Ford. It's a Cosworth BDH, 1300 cc's. It makes 175 horsepower at 9,600 RPM. And it runs on Lucas mechanical fuel injection. This is the very first one that was built. They built five, this is number one. So we can see the injectors and the individual tubes there. This car has a lot of race history to it. It was originally owned and raced by Tom Foster that was head of Foster Farm Chicken. In 1978, this car cost $15,500, which is more than a Ferrari. A couple pit vehicles, a Lotus and a Ford Escort. We have another Cortina. Now we have a Ford console. is left-hand drive. See the classic taillights here that are used a lot on TVRs. It's another 911. Volkswagen Golf. But this might actually be a rabbit because that's what they called some of the Golfs here in the United States. Now we have a Volvo 142. And then we have a Ford Escort with a Merker XR4Ti parked next to it. How many racetracks do you know still use a vintage service truck? There's a racing school here. And to teach low traction maneuvers, they have these setups that can jack the car up so that not much of the tire's contact patch is touching the ground so that they spin out very easily.
Yeah.
I had a great day today at the Portland International Raceway. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.